Hello, I am Dr. Shubangi Stalder, mathematics professor at University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee at Waukesha. Me and my colleague, Dr. Paul Martin, who is at University of Wisconsin Stevens Point at Wausau, have created these open educational resources with the textbook and now the lectures. These lectures will go hand in hand with the book or also can be used as standalone lectures for different topics in college algebra. We have included some mindfulness exercises to allow those who have fear and anxiety issues to also be able to overcome those fears and anxieties and learn the mathematics that is presented in our textbook. We are hoping that the way we present along with some of these other techniques allow you to overcome some of the obstacles that were in your way to learn college algebra. This is the only time you will see me so that you can simply focus on my voice and the material presented to you on the screen. Thank you and we are very grateful that you are giving us a chance to bring you these materials. In this class, we'll look at college algebra material for STEM majors. For those who might not know what STEM stands for, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. We will also be including nursing, business, whole bunch of other majors for which you will need algebra. So before we start with what the course structure will be like, let's take a look and see if you can answer the following question. Please be very honest with your answer here. There's no one here except you. So be honest and see what is the percentage chance between 0 and 100 you give yourself for making it through this class with a grade of C or better. So go ahead, pause the video here and let me know what you think is the percentage chance you give yourself to getting a C or better grade in the class. Go ahead. Don't just fast forward. Please take time and answer this question. All right, so the chance of success is what? I can't hear you. Come on, louder. What do you think? Yes, very good. 100%. Now, some of you might think, what? I didn't say 100 if you said anything under 100%, I want you to reevaluate that. Remember, you have not met your teacher. You have no idea what the class expectations are. So you cannot start out giving yourself less than 100% chance. So it's very, very important that you give yourself 100% chance of success. Now, at the end of the semester, you can say, I got this grade or whatever grade you end up with. But right now, the chance that you will make it through class with a C or better grade is going to be 100%. You have to have that intention. The intention will automatically build your confidence, and that confidence will lead you to get the 100%. So it's a cycle. If you start out with anything less than 100, then Throughout the semester, if something happens, you're going to feed into that intention and you might not make it. So it's extremely important to know that every single person in the class, if you put in the effort, if you do exactly what we're telling you to do, you should have no trouble passing the class. Not just with a C, but I would predict that you would pass with an A or a B. So let's talk about the classroom setup. In a normal mathematics classroom, you go to school, the teacher stands in front of you, lectures you, you take notes, then you go home and then you sit and you do homework. So at home, basically you'll be solving homework problems from the textbook. That's what happens in a traditional class. But many people notice that when they open their textbook to start doing problems and they're stuck, there is no one to help them because you have to wait until you have time to go to a tutor or to your teacher outside of class or ask questions the next day in the classroom. But because time is limited, the teacher may not have time to answer questions to all your questions. And so now we have a cycle in which 
you couldn't do some problems, you didn't get answers to them, now new material is coming at you and the cycle continues. So this class is a flipped classroom. In a flipped classroom, the roles are reversed. Outside class, you will watch lectures. You will also be, if you look in your textbook, answering questions from worksheet questions, pondering on extension questions, and attempt exercises. But when you come to class, of course, there will be a little review, but mostly you'll be sitting and doing problems. So there is active learning. There is constant student engagement. And because you will come prepared to class, you will also make others feel like they belong because you are helping each other. When you're doing problems, you're not just going to passively sit and watch somebody else do it. You are actively engaged. The classroom structure, you will have an entry ticket when you first get to class for accountability purposes to make sure that you've done the homework required. Then you'll be put in groups or individually, do problems, go to board, present your work. Nobody will be forced to present anything. If necessary, you will give the work to your teacher and the teacher will put it on the board. Before you leave class, you will do an exit ticket. So it's important to remember the classroom structure. At home, you are watching lectures, reading the textbook, attempting required problems. When you come to class, you will do an entrance ticket, which is basically a review of all the homework that you completed so the teacher knows where you're at. Then you will start working on worksheet extension, exercise questions, discussions that you had attempted for prior to coming to class. Problem solving is what the most classes spent on along with some exploration of concepts, like in the lab using computers or some graphing utilities. And then before you leave class, you will fill out an exit ticket and you will tell the teacher the summary of what happened in the classroom along with what is it that you still needed help on so the teacher can address it the following class. That's the classroom structure. You, throughout the class will be embedded attendance quizzes. This is extremely important to understand. Attendance quizzes are short quizzes in which there are problems that you have to complete and if you get stuck, go to the teacher, get help, finish the quizzes and then those are your attendance quizzes. So if you attend class, that should already be done. Now, what time commitment are we looking at? The time commitment per week. Well, class, if you're doing the 09810H together, that is six hours of class time. If you're doing just the 105, then it's three hours of class time. So that's already done because if you attend class, then those six hours are already taken care of. Then outside of class, the requirement for any college class is double time. So if you are doing six hour class, it will be 12 to 15 hours outside of class commitment. This is extremely important to recognize. You are voluntarily choosing to do this work, which means you have to spend 12 to 15 hours out of class. And some of you might react, what? And the answer is, remember, you are in college, and college work requires way more work outside of class than you may have previously experienced. So it's extremely important to recognize what commitment you are making. So your role in a flipped class is shifted. Out of class, you're listening to lectures, you're thinking critically about extension questions and attempting other problems that were assigned. Inside the classroom, you're not just passively sitting. You are actively engaged. You have to be prepared, be accountable to the whole class. You have to help build a community of learners. So it's not enough you do it. You also help your neighbors. You motivate your neighbors. You are actively learning. That means you will problem solve. You will put them on the board. And again, remember, we accommodate everyone. So if necessary, you just give your work to the teacher and the teacher will put it up on the board. So that's no problem, but you have to work. You can't just sit in a classroom. You have to learn how to pose new questions, ask what, if, why, those kind of questions. And then you have to also learn how to listen to others in your classroom. Active listening to each other is extremely important in the learning process. Learning, once you do a problem and you are not successful, learning how to fail successfully is extremely important 
just as important as being able to solve problems. And then just learning to listen to your true intuitive mathematical voice. We are hoping that by going through this process that you will find your mathematical voice and learn to trust it. So let's talk about problem solving. When you solve a problem, you, there are many different ways we'll teach you to solve a problem, algebraically, visually, or graphically. And then it's your job to spend time error analysis. Error analysis means when you make mistakes, figuring out what happened, why did you do that answer? So in other words, you cannot just say, oh, I don't know, I just did it. It came from your brain, so you have to be ready to figure out what caused that mistake. This will prevent you from making the mistake again once you understand it. You have to have active reflection in order to be able to do that. The active reflection will also allow you to pull and synthesize the mathematical tools that were necessary to solve the problem. This process of problem solving will allow you to get fluency in solving mathematical problems. The procedural fluency means that you know how to execute all the different steps of a problem. But active reflection will allow you to also be able to have a conceptual understanding. And so don't just be happy in solving a problem one way. Please learn to communicate your solutions to others. This is extremely important. If you can communicate the solutions to others, that means you truly understood the material. In the classroom, you are going to have to be task-focused. You need grit for that. What does that mean? That means hard work, ready to work, do whatever it takes to get there, which means in order to do that, you have to show up. You have to show up to class, and I don't just mean show up in the body, but body, mind, soul. You have to be there present, all of you. And then deliberate, goal-oriented practice will allow you to become an expert. This is called high-quality effort. That's what's needed to become an expert at something. And then just a number of hours, right? However, a lot of students do cost-benefit analysis because we only have so much time in the day. And also, a lot of students are focused on loss aversion. Nobody likes being wrong at something. And so you have to learn to be prepared for setbacks and how to overcome that. Don't let setbacks keep you down. How are we going to assess the knowledge that you gain? Of course, we'll have traditional exams and quizzes like you do in normal classes, but we're going to have varied assessments. You will have reasoning assessments where you will be given problems you never saw before, but you can use your open notes, open text to solve the problem. This is to see if you can apply the knowledge that you gained. And then, of course, classroom participation. This is going to be huge because that's the only way you can make sure you can solve problems and understand them. But even the traditional exams, we're not letting everybody take the exam. We're creating eligibility criteria. And that is so that if we say you're eligible, then you can go to exam without having any fears or anxieties because you know that the teacher is not going to allow you to take an exam if you're not ready. So what does that mean? That means you must have 90% or more on all quizzes, attendance quizzes. Your portfolio should be up to date. We'll talk about what goes in the portfolio soon. And then you must have completed all exam reviews, all components of the exam reviews. Unless you meet all these three criteria, you are not eligible to take an exam or a quiz. So meeting all of these criteria allows you to take an exam or a quiz. What that means is that you cannot miss more than 50 minutes of class before any exam. If you miss more than that, you risk not being able to take an exam or a quiz. This is important. You are accountable, and that means you cannot just slack off. You have to achieve certain mastery before going into an exam. But if you're eligible to take an exam, that means you don't have to worry. You can be confident that you are going to make it. All right, let's talk about portfolio. Please make sure that all of your material is organized in a three-ring binder with the following tabs. 
The tab should have notes, text, which will include worksheets, extensions, exercises, accountability, and lab work. Those are your four tabs. The accountability will include the entry and exit tickets. And lab work is what you do in classroom, either as computer work or in groups or what you present. So those are your four tabs. So notes, let's talk about notes. Always start out your notes with date. Write down the title of your section that you're working on. So in this case, it's introduction and then questions. And then on the side, always make a column called for my is only where you can make your own comments. So if you're stuck or if something was not understandable in the lecture, you can record that on the side here. You can also make teeny little notes to yourself. This is a column that the teacher won't look at. It's just for your own understanding and recording of what's happening emotionally or what's happening in terms of understanding. The textbook tab should have worksheet extension and exercises that come after each of the sections. Worksheets look like this. There will be questions. These questions help you to be able to take notes when you're actually watching the lectures. The extension questions are meant for you. So you'll see a little person with a question mark. And those extension questions are critical thinking questions that tell you how to prepare your knowledge base and expand it. Ask questions about how to expand that knowledge to a different context. Maybe you'll go from one dimensions to two and three, and so on. And then the exercise sets are normal problems that you are used to solving after doing a section in mathematics. In the accountability tab, you will simply put entry and exit tickets. Those are sheets uh, that will look like this. Entry ticket is summary of what's happening in the classroom before you arrived. From the lectures that you watch, you can make a note of all the things you were stuck on and then do a checklist. You just have to check off all the homework that was assigned and which of these did you do. The exit ticket will look like this at the end of the class. Again, you will write a summary of what happened in two or three sentences in the classroom. Make a list of concepts or problems you got stuck on and then the homework for next class to make sure that you understand what the homework is. All right, so lab work, again, is just all the problem solving that you might do in groups or presentations or computer work. So we're using graphing utilities. That's what will be the lab work for. Workload expectations. Again, we talked about how six weeks, a uh, six credit class, that would mean 70 or five hours in the semester. If you're doing three credits, that will be half of that. If out of class time, again, 12 to 15 hours for a six credit class, and half of that if you are doing three credit class. So if you're doing a three credit class, expect about 150 hours. And if you're doing the 098, 108, you should expect 300 hours in the semester. That's almost like a part-time job, right? So managing workload is going to be a huge challenge. But remember, you are up to it. Just make sure that you take time to schedule all the study time ahead of time.